lead Secret Service agent at Trump's Butler rally knew of credible intelligence of threat but didn't raise alarm. The lead agent at the rally knew there was a credible threat on Trump's life that day and said nothing about it. Someone had to have allowed this to happen both times, Mm -hmm. both at Butler and at Trump International. So it's interesting to me that this person has not been named, has not been disciplined, and to our knowledge, has not been removed from any sort of duties. If we were connecting the dots and speculating on why that would be, what would the only logical conclusion be that they didn't remove this person, haven't named this person, and haven't taken any disciplinary action on this person? Because they want third time to be the charm. They are allowing it to happen. There's a mole or a leak There's a or problem. a traitor there. There's a Period. problem. What is up, guys? It's Andy Fussell, and this is the show for the realists. Say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern society, and welcome to motherfucking reality, guys. Today, we have Andy and DJ Cruise the motherfucking internet. That's what we're going to do. That's what CTI stands for. It stands for Cruise the Internet. We're going to put topics of the day up on the screen. We're going to speculate on what's true and what's not true, and then we're going to talk about how we, the people, got to solve these problems going on in the world. Other times throughout the week, we're going to have Q and AF. That's where you submit questions and we bring you the answers. Now, the questions can be about anything. They can be about business, success, entrepreneurship, personal development, what's going on in the world. We'll pick some from all those categories. You could submit your question a couple different ways. The first way is, guys, email these questions in to askandy at andyfrasella.com. Also, if you go on YouTube in the comment section of the Q&AF episodes and drop your question in the comments, we'll pick some from there as well. Sometimes we're going to have real talk. Real talk is just five to 20 minutes and me giving you some real talk could be about what's going on in the world. Most of the time it's about personal development. Uh, Then we have 75 hard verses. That's where people who have completed the 75 hard program come in, talk about how their life was before, how their life is now, and how they used the 75 hard program to realign themselves mentally. Uh, If you're unfamiliar with 75 Hard, it is the initial phase of the Live Hard program, which is the world's most famous in history mental realignment, mental toughness program. You can get that program for free at episode 208 on the audio feed. There's also a book available on my website, andyfrasella.com, called The Book on Mental Toughness, which outlines the entire Live Hard program, plus a whole bunch of chapters on mental toughness, why it's important, how to utilize it in your life, along with some case studies on some very famous people uh, that talks about how they've used mental toughness to become the very famous people that you recognize. Now, one thing about this show that's different than all the other shows of this size, we're one of the biggest shows in the world, and we don't run ads. Now, we don't run ads because I don't want to answer to people telling me what I can and can't say, all right? So in exchange for that, I have a little deal that I make with you guys. We're constantly dealing with censorship. We're constantly dealing with shadow bans. We're constantly dealing with traffic throttling, and I need your help to get the show out, all right? So because I'm not going to run your ears off with a whole bunch of ads, uh, I ask very simply that if you listen to the show, you help us grow it, all right? So if the show makes you think, if it makes you laugh, if it's a good perspective, do us a favor and share the show. Don't be a hoe. Share the show. All right. What's up? What's going on, man? Nothing. What are you doing? Oh, uh, nothing. The show is uh, for educational purposes only. That's right. <laughs> is that the disclaimer? I think so. Yeah. I've been seeing everybody else do it, so shit, it might help. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, like, put that in the disclaimer, like in the descriptions and shit, so it doesn't Yeah, get... my views are views, uh, are my own views, mm-hmm. and nobody else's views. Yep. I share those views that are also nobody else's. That's right. And I approve this message. Yeah. All right. Is that, is that fair? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, what's going on, man? <laughs> Nothing, dude. Dude, uh, there is a lot happening today. Uh, we got a lot to cover. We cool. Got a lot to get into. Uh, so let's just do it. I wanted to bring in this first, man, because this video, I personally- Well, think- before we get into it, uh huh. all right, I just want to say uh, you guys are still blasting me about how to support. Okay? You're asking how to support. How do you support the show? All right. The show is very simple to support. Share the show. All right. And when you go to your little convenience store, your grocery store, whatever it is in your neighborhood, pick up one of these drinks. All right. Or a hundred of them. Yeah. Or one of these drinks. Yeah. Or one of those drinks. Or one of these ones. The, the best damn energy drink in history. 
of Earth. All right, so buy that. Get yourself a protein bar, some meat sticks at your gas station. We'll call it even, all right? Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah, let's get into it, man. I wanted to bring this up, dude. This video, uh, this clip's actually going mega viral right now, uh, and it's fucking awesome. Uh, and not awesome for the reason I think most people look at it, uh, but let's check it out. Uh, outraged Trump-supporting mom confronts and blasts school for forcing 17-year-old to register to vote Democrat without her consent, claiming Trump win would doom black people. This is crazy. This is crazy. But I love this video. I absolutely love it. So let's dive into this a little bit. Um, a mother in Pittsburgh is furious after her 17-year-old daughter was pulled out of class and told to register to vote without her consent. To make matters worse, the school's staff allegedly pushed a blatant political agenda, suggesting that, quote, if Donald Trump was elected, black people would be doomed. In a now viral TikTok video, Kay Montana shared the distressing experience her daughter Nyla went through, claiming, quote, Pittsburgh public schools not only registered her to vote without her permission, but was also subjected to political indoctrination. Quote, my 17 year old daughter was pulled out of class and told she needed to register to vote. Not only was she told how to register, she was told who she should vote for. Kay uh, said in her uh, viral video. Now, the clip's is like six, almost seven minutes long, so we won't watch the whole thing. So let's check this clip out. Cause I'm pissed right now. Okay, what's, what's going so on? So yesterday, you pulled my daughter out of class and you told her that it was mandatory for her to vote. No, I didn't say it was mandatory. So that's what she told me. These okay. are her words that she said it was mandatory that she votes. No ma'am, but go ahead, finish telling me. Okay. And that you projected your fears and insecurities on her, telling her if Donald Trump was elected, black people would be doomed. Oh, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. So let me say this. I am um, a minority inspector okay. for 1016. And you know, as a minority inspector, you never, ever, ever discuss politics or your beliefs or anything so like that. So can we call my daughter down here? Because at this point, you're making it like she's a complete liar. My daughter no. has never told me someone said anything such to her like no, this. No, ma'am. So this is what happened. We were, we, I did call her down to register to vote because we're registering all the 18 year olds to vote. She's not 18, she's 17. Yeah, but she turns 18 before the election. Yeah, but I could have took my daughter to register her to vote. I did not ask for y'all to register my daughter to vote. I have not even spoke to her about the election yet. And I am not a Harris supporter. I am a Trump supporter. Yes, ma'am. She told So me for that. you to tell her anything, and it's like now you're saying she's lying. So now no, I want her to come I'm down not, here. Listen, I'm not saying your daughter's lying. What I'm saying is, is that I did call her into my office. I did register her to vote. We did have a conversation about it. She did ask me about Trump. She did ask me about Harris. So we started a conversation about, you know, what's going on. Um, I wasn't projecting two seconds ago. I was just she said, as a minority inspector, we're not allowed to ever, 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 ever talk about our beliefs in politics. But did, then, did, am I the only one that heard no, no, that? I heard that. Okay. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> she also don't want to call their daughter down. down. No, because she's she knows totally she's lying. lying. She knows yeah. she's lying, bro. She's caught. Yeah. I'm projecting anything on her. I was just talking about things that are going on in the world. Yeah, did you tell her about the border being unsecure? So did so, you tell her about all the illegal criminals that's in this country right now? So we did have a conversation about the border and we did talk about the border policies and all of that. We did have a conversation about everything. Um, so let me just say this. I apologize to you for offending you because that was not my intentions. I was not trying to project any of my political beliefs on your daughter or anything like That's that. That's why I don't know why the we, conversation was had. With consent forms that I signed, saying I was okay with my daughter being registered to vote in school. She's still 17 years old. So what consent forms were signed for that? None. Because because there really isn't any. You know, we, we just raised their students to vote here. At every high school, they're raising students but to vote. But she's still not 18. She had until the 21st of October, I believe, to register. And her birthday is on the 5th. Right. So we are permitted to register all students whose birthday is by, that happens by the 5th because that's the date of the election.
completely fucking lying. And the mom even submitted uh, some screenshots of the text messages going back and forth with her daughter, Nyla, um, where her daughter sent her uh, saying, quote, they made me register to vote today. I didn't want it, but they forced me. I said, I'll do it another time. But then she told me I had no choice, which I think is a lie. I'm not even 18 yet. Uh, to which the mom replied, who made you and what party did you choose? It was a she and Democrat. Did, uh, quote, did they tell you to pick that? And who was the lady? I forgot her name. I found out tomorrow. And yeah, basically she kept saying how it'll be bad if I pick Trump because of what he was doing to the Mexicans and stuff. I wasn't really paying her no mind. Where was this lady at your school? Where? Yes, my school. She pulled me out of class to register. I asked to do it another time. And she said I really couldn't. Um, yeah. And uh, they go on and says uh, uh, the mom says, quote, I'm pissed. She had no right to fill your head up with lies and choose what party you are registering for. I am your mother and I will talk to you about what you won't even be 18 until the 5th. Uh, she yeah, she was definitely telling me all this bad stuff about Trump saying us blacks are doomed and going to be done if they let Trump back in. And I'm like, ma'am, please. And I know that uh, that's what I uh, said. She said I ain't had no choice but to do it at the time uh, to which the mom f- uh, finally replied. I'm calling up there tomorrow. This is total disrespect. If we vote Kamala, we are doomed. She really tried to fill your head with lies. I fucking love this. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I love it. It's weird that any school administrator would do that right like i mean they've only been indoctrinating kids since they were three Mm -hmm. telling white kids that they're evil for being white telling black kids they have no chance because they're black and the systematic racism and then you have a white principal or whatever this lady is telling a black minority inspector who's a white is that a white minority inspector who's telling a black family that if you don't vote for for kamala you're doomed what does that sound like to you? It sounds kind of racist. Du- <laughs> Just a little bit. You can't think for yourself, Just so you better bit. listen to me because I know. Dude, and it's crazy because, like, I mean, you know, I remember in middle school, uh, you know, they had this thing every year during the elections and shit. Um, it was like kids vote or whatever. Like, they did, like, mock elections. And, uh-huh. like, you know, they showed you how to vote and, like, set up, you know, fake ballots and shit like that. Like, I remember that. But, like, even I remember... Like, even then. You so know, it's when, just like the regular election with fake ballots and yeah, shit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but, like, even then, like, our teacher's like, yeah, man, you guys should vote Democrat. It was always indoctrinated. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? But, like, yeah. you're making this 17-year-old go through some legal shit that, like, you have no right to do. You know, at the end of the day, like, that's the parent's choice, man. And I, I applaud this mother. I think she's fucking Oh, awesome. yeah. Dude, she's killing We need way more of that. And I feel like this is actually, like, happening a lot more than people are, are aware of. If you watch the whole clip at the end, she's like... I'm calling the news. Yeah. And yeah. she's like, okay. Yeah. Like, dude. Dude, it's fucked up, man. Hey, man, this is happening every day. This is happening in every school. This has been happening in every school since these kids were old enough to comprehend and understand and communicate. They've been told, and not just black kids, white kids too. They've been told, you vote Democrat. If you vote anything but Democrat, you're a racist. Okay? And that's what they tell these kids. They tell the white kids that. They tell the black kids, if you don't vote Democrat, you're trading your own race in. Right. And, you know, they we, we have grown adults literally social pressuring little kids to feel a certain way about life uh, that is based on the adult's perspective and not based on the children's uh, own thoughts or critical thinking or perspective uh, or the family's perspective. And... This is what's been going on for years. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's not sh- surprising to me. It's yeah. I'm glad she got this on camera. But, guys, this happens every day. And you know that it's happening at your kid's school, too. Yep. Um, it happened to you guys, if you look back and remember, you know, how they do this. The do, schools I- today are not about education. They're not about teaching how to think. Are there good teachers? Sure. But those good teachers are few and far between compared to the people who think that being a teacher makes you an activist for a certain political cause or party. And we're supposed to teach our kids how to do math, how to operate in life, how to be able to run uh, finances, which we don't teach very, very much at all. Read, write, basic shit. Yeah, how to function as a high-performing person in society and we don't do that we teach them how to be robots we teach them how to be dependent we teach them not how to think but what to think 
And, uh, you know, this is why when Trump says the Department of Education needs to be reworked and, and disbanded and rebuilt, I agree with him. Yeah. Bro, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can sign up for uh, to be a, a uh, majority inspector. Yeah. And I'm going to go to these schools and tell little white kids that they got to vote for Trump or they're doomed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at <her>, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> dude, it's just, it's insane, dude. It's insane that these people think that they have more say over people's children than the people have themselves. We see this happening with the gender ideology. We see this happening with politics. We see this happening with all sorts of social initiatives. And it's not okay. No. All right? It's not okay. It's not okay for grown adults to manipulate little children into being what they want them to be. This is why people get so pissed off about all this shit that's going on with the gender ideology and the books that are being removed. You know, I see a lot of leftists complaining. They're saying the right wing is just like Hitler. They're removing books. Do you know what books they're removing? Which ones are they doing it? Yeah, they're removing the books that are legitimately way out of line for any small child to be reading or have read to them. These are books about sexual situations and Look, man, kids aren't supposed to be groomed in that manner. They're not supposed to be taught these things when they're little kids. And these people are forcing these adult issues on these little kids. And essentially, um, you know, not just indoctrin indoctrinating them, but but stealing their childhood. Mm -hmm. You know, like like the innocence of being a child, man. Like when I was a kid, bro, I'm riding my bike. I'm outside playing G.I. Joe and fucking baseball and shit. I'm not worried about sexuality and gender shit. Now we have these grown teachers who are clearly mentally ill pushing their own ideology, their social ideology, their their gender ideology onto little bitty children, little bitty kids. That's not appropriate. Well, see, the difference is like, and I'm sure, you know, Andy, when you were a little kid, you're running around, you may have found and stumbled upon a Playboy magazine or something. That's at home, though. And, like, you were able to, you know what I'm saying, your dad caught you, mom caught you. Like, you were able to handle that there. That, it, they, it, you that's wasn't a family being, issue. You wasn't being given fucking these fucking magazines and shit in school yeah. by a fucking teacher. Yeah. That's a difference. Or little animated Playboys, which, which is, is what, what the f*** these books are. what they are, bro. Yeah. And they are animated because they have illustrations of this yeah. shit. You know? Bro, like, listen. Ten years ago, these people would be put in jail for child pornography. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's... It's I insane. The, I don't see the difference, man. I don't either. I don't see and the I difference. And I think people are getting pissed. And it's not just a certain group of people that are getting pissed. These teachers are way out over their skis. They're out of fucking control. Um, like I said, are there great teachers? Sure. But there is a big group of teachers who are way out of control with what they believe about the children and the responsibility of what they're teaching to the children. And... When we look at these teachers, we have to realize that these teachers are communists. They are communist teachers. Communist ideology has infiltrated our schools to the point where a whole bunch of programs are now considered normal in our schools, which are highly abnormal. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah, it's well, fucking nuts, dude. Shout out to this mom. And they need to I change agree. that fucking position. Minority inspector. You're inspecting minorities. That sounds racist as fuck. Bro, come on, and dude. She takes it as a fucking Listen, badge of the, honor. The, I'm the minority inspector. No, the term minority slash majority is just a divisive term anyway. Right. We should be referring to each other as Americans. We are Americans. It doesn't matter if there's this many white people or this many black people or this many Asian people. Who gives a fuck? You're fucking American, dude. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crazy. Guys, jump on this conversation. Let us know what you guys think down in the comments. Uh, with that being said, man, let's get to our headlines. Got a lot of shit out here today, man. Really? I got a lot. Let's dive into it. Uh, headline number one. Guys, remember, if you want to see any of these pictures, articles, links, videos, go to andyforsella.com. You can find them linked there. Headline number one. Uh, top secret service agent in Pittsburgh says he was kept in dark on credible threat ahead of Butler rally. There is a, still a lot of updates coming out of this, and I think it's important to cover it because, I mean, it just kind of solidifies our thoughts and theories that are yeah, and out it's, there. Yeah, and it's being memory hole by most of the news. Most of the news. Yeah. 
most of the news. So the, the Secret Service special agent in charge of the Pittsburgh field office was not informed of credible threats to former President Trump ahead of his July 13th outdoor rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, and detailed in handwritten notes that they didn't learn about the threats until after the assassination attempt when they saw it on television. In a preliminary report on the July 13th assassination attempt on Trump released on Wednesday by the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee, top senators listed several key failures of the Secret Service. Quote, why am I hearing that there were threats to the site on TV? Uh, The special agent in charge of the Pittsburgh office wrote in a handwritten note after the attempt. Quote, how can the special agent in charge of our field office not know about any threats? And why did they feel that only one part of special operations divisions was sufficient to cover it instead of the entire package? The note continued. Now, what is he talking about? Well, he's talking about this. The fact that this headline reads lead Secret Service agent at Trump's Butler rally knew of credible intelligence of threat, but didn't raise alarm. The lead agent at the rally knew there was a credible threat on Trump's life that day and said nothing about it. Said nothing about it. Um, Not only did he not uh, inform the special agent in charge, he didn't inform the other uh, key position uh, decision makers in the details. Um, And they're not releasing this person's name. This guy who knew the credible information, they're not releasing his name, not saying anything about it. Um, And to my knowledge, at the time of this recording, he has not been fired or any disciplinary action. Right. And in fact, they're all just jumbling around responsibility. Um, It's pretty interesting. Uh, Despite the damning findings, the lead agent and 11 other members of the Secret Service interviewed by investigators refused to accept responsibility for any of the numerous security failures identified in the report. Um, Now, on to the second attempted assassination. Um, There's new updates in that. Uh, Judge Eileen Cannon uh, to preside over trial of Ryan Roth and attempted assassination of Trump case. Um, So the same judge who threw out the bullshit case with the classified docs and all of that stuff in Florida. Yeah, she's overseeing this trial. Florida Judge Eileen Cannon, a Trump appointee who presided over the Biden-Harris DOJ's prosecution of Donald Trump in the classified documents case, will preside over the trial of Ryan Roth, who is now charged with attempted assassination. Um, So previously there was just two charges. They've now added on the attempted assassination charge, um, which is great to hear. Um, So that's another update Um, and other news going on uh, with our leaders of the world. Um, Do you see Biden go on The View? No, but before we get into this, I got to say something about this. So the special agent in charge was not informed by the lead agent on site that there was a credible threat. Right. All right. Now, we've been talking about this since, obviously, it happened. Over and over and over again. Now, we've both agreed, and a lot of other people agree with us, that someone had to have allowed this to happen both times, Mm -hmm. both at Butler and at Trump International. So it's interesting to me that this person has not been named, has not been disciplined, and to our knowledge, has not been removed from any sort of duties. Why, if we were connecting the dots and speculating on why that would be, what would the only logical conclusion be that they didn't remove this person, haven't named this person, and haven't taken any disciplinary action on this person? Because they want third time to be the charm. They are allowing it to happen. This is the gatekeeper, and this is speculation, but by all accounts, and the evidence is shown, from what I see, this is their person who's allowing this to happen multiple times, and they don't want to get the person out there, the name out there, the, the whatever. So... That's just my take on what it looks like. What's it look like to you? I mean, that's exactly what it looks like to me. Like, I mean, we have events all the time, right? I run your security. This would be the exact equivalent to one of our guys on our team knowing something's about to happen, either seeing a guy on the roof or knowing that, you know, there's a potential for some type of action, knowing that and keeping his fucking mouth shut. Not saying shit to you. Not to say anything to me. And I have the power to either change shit, let you know, hey, we're canceling, we're going to move, we're going to do something, and not telling me fucking anything. Yeah. 
I'm going to beat that guy's ass. Yeah. Well, well, first. At least. Yeah. Right. And But like, there's no way he's staying on. There's no fucking way. Yeah. You're a threat. Mm -hmm. You are a threat. See something, you say something. That's our fucking rule. Well. Right. Like, I, I have a hard you time. You think that's not their rule too? Bro, I have a hard time believing that, that this isn't like, at this point, we know it's intentional. And I say that like, and listen, I, we get, we know great guys in the secret service. I know great fucking agents, great guys. And this is nothing against them, right? Cause they're great guys, but there is a fucking problem. There's a mole or a leak There's a or problem. a traitor there. There's a Period. problem. And, and those good guys, those that I know or don't know, you guys need to be speaking up, man, mm -hmm. and pushing this shit out because until like, bro, it's gonna, it's going to cause so much more damage than I think people are even aware of. Yeah. And 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 God forbid, you know, like <laughs> a third time is a f charm. It's it won't be good for this country, bro. It won't be good. Nothing good's going to come out of it. Nothing's going to going to come out. Um and so that's interesting, but like even with that though, we talk all the time like how these people on the left, they push this shit. Right? Like they it's like they want this to happen. Right? Of course they do. Of course they do. And they have no problem going on TV, on Twitter, on going in, in these interviews and continuing to push this shit, continue to push it. And that's exactly what happened today um, by the alleged sitting president. Um, Biden went on The View, man. Um, he went on The View with Whoopi and, you know, all of those other brunchers. And um, he was asked a couple of softball questions. You know, they tried to cover the, you know, him being forced out of the uh, of the election. Um, the question was asked by Alyssa Ferris. She said, quote, did you feel that your hand was forced? And what is your relationship with Speaker Pelosi now? Because um, they were talking about how Speaker Pelosi allegedly had some involvement in Biden stepping aside. Um, he said, quote, my relationship is fine. Look, I, I I never fully believed the assertions that somehow there was this overwhelming reluctance to my running again. I didn't sense that. Biden finally said Quote, and although the polling, they said Biden polling was different. The fact of the matter is my polling was about where, you know, about always within range of beating this guy. The president added, uh, there were some folks who would like to see me step aside so they had uh, a chance to move on. I get that. That's just human nature. But that wasn't the reason that I stepped down. I stepped down because I started thinking about, you know, it's hard to think of. I know you're only 30, but it's hard to think of. It's hard for me to even say how old I am. It's like, holy God, that can't be right. Um, so he's blaming it on, you know, it's just his age and he had to step around for somebody younger. Um, but we all know that's not true. He showed himself. Um, he couldn't fucking put a sentence together during the presidential debate with Donald Trump. That's really what it was. Uh, but then it got to this threat part. Watch this clip. Then he just wouldn't go. He was like a, a, a bug. He just kept being there. He was like a, like a bug right there. Zzz, zzz. So you felt. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg is calling Donald Trump a bug and saying he's like a little fly buzzing around. And Donald Trump, I mean, and Joe Biden slapped his hand on the fucking table as if he's like squashing the bug. They have no problem doing this. Shit. No, but if you do it, you go on a list. It'd be a problem. That's right be a fucking problem it wasn't just biden even his own commerce secretary calls on democrat supporters to deal with trump quote let's extinguish him for good you know i remember that bloodbath comment that trump made about the economy yeah and, and how they you know took that and fucking ran with yeah. it but you literally have people saying oh it's gonna get worse let's dude. extinguish him for it's good. gonna work it's gonna get worse these people are desperate they know there's no accountability for them they don't get punished. They don't get drugged through the media. Nothing happens to them when they say anything. Anybody who's on the other side says two fucking things and you're on some sort of watch list and you're all over the fucking news and blah, blah, blah. But these people get total immunity to hate yeah. uh, with impunity at whatever they decide they want to hate, yeah. you know, and dude, that's wrong. And the people should stand up against that. And the next time you guys see someone who is on the middle to the right side getting destroyed you should all stand up and, and speak up for them let's check this out he says is the opposite it's just another lie like how did we get here let's extinguish him for good we have an answer we have a remarkably talented candidate who is sincere who's pragmatic who's open let's just get it done and who what candidate is she watching these people are total liars, dude. They're complete liars. 
You have Kamala Harris, who was just endorsed by Dick Cheney, the biggest warmonger that's ever existed in the United States. She was also endorsed by every Hollywood actor with the exact same line of endorsement. She was endorsed by uh, the IRS, you know, and I don't know about you, but you know, when the IRS came out and endorsed her, I, that's, that pretty much got me, dude. Like, I'm definitely switching my vote. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to vote for her. Like, we got all these people. We got we got this Diddy shit, and people keep saying, oh, this Diddy shit's a distraction. No, dude, it's wow. all intertwined. It's all intertwined to their, their sphere of influence, okay? We got all these things happening at once, and they're all related. They're not unrelated. And, um, you know, fuck, dude. You know, people... They're delusional. Bro, if you need any more reason, you know, this also comes out today. Uh, Walls blasted for huddling with George Soros' son at New York City luxury apartment. Billionaire Nepo baby. Um, yeah, so Tim Walls, uh, vice presidential candidate, uh, was blasted on social media this week for visiting the upscale Manhattan apartment of Alex Soros, the son of billionaire liberal mega donor George Soros. He even posted it on Twitter. Um, Alex Soros Diggs saying, quote, honored to host governor at Tim Walls at my home in New York City um, with a few various <laughs> pictures of them uh, being there, to which he was destroyed in the comments, both of them, um, saying that uh, like this one person said, if this doesn't convince you to vote for Trump, I don't know what else will. Uh, another person wrote with respect, probably not helpful for you two to put yourself in the story like this. Um, my How many tampons <laughs> did Tim Walls offer you, Alex Soros? And more importantly. How many did you use? <laughs> I think it's also to the stamp of approval. You guys own him now. And um, you guys can go find out who you guys are on your yeah. own. You got Zelensky campaigning for these people. You got the IRS backing them. You got fucking Alex Soros and George Soros backing them. Dude, you got the view. Whoopi back Goldberg. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> that stops it for me. Like, dude, the more, <laughs> the more people that endorse her, the more it's like, of, uh, like it's pushing people towards Trump. Mm -hmm. It's all the wrong people. Like, bro, Dick Cheney's going to get your fucking kids killed, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Ah. Yeah. I think people, I think, I think most people understand what's going on. I think even people who are Democrat understand what's going on. Yeah. Guys, do you understand what's going on? Let us know down in the comments what you guys think. Uh, with that being said, let's go. Cruise. Who is that woman? Why is she standing in front of Israel flags like that? That's the lady who said, uh, let's extinguish. Is Trump. she a dual citizen? Do we know? Like half of our government? Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Educational purposes only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, guys, let's throw down in the comments what you guys think. With that being said, let's go cruise some of these comments. Uh, this first comment comes from uh, Welding Lord. It says, if you want to know what Andy will be like on cocaine, see Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, Flair. I can see it. Yeah. I can see it. I don't know. I can see it. You do, it, do the shirt rip. Huh? Right now? Yeah. Yeah. You want me to? Yeah. Why, why, do Probably that. A dollar. Bro, I'm saying. Go viral. 20 bucks. 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for the gram, man. That's right. Um, all right. Yeah. Thanks, Welding Lord. Uh, this next comment comes from William Cole, 6338. Uh, I have dyslexia. Um, he's uh, at William Cole's 6348. He says, quote, uh, what would I do if a man wanted to hang out with my daughter? I'd buy the cheapest wood chipper I could find so it stalls out halfway through. No, nah, man, you got to get one of them old wood chippers, you know, the kind you turn. The hand cranks? Yeah, that's right. I don't even know if they make them, but we can make, a, we can make them. Yeah. We're going to make our own thing. A hand crank yeah, wood hand chipper. Yeah, hand crank wood chipper. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I just wouldn't want like the. the that way, foods. you really got to be committed. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like you got to put a little muscle behind. But like it. how hard? Like I mean, like two people. Okay, you know, it's like a two man, like those old two man saws. Saws, yeah. You know, I okay. think two people committed. It shows unity, builds camaraderie. You know what I'm saying? We're committed. We start to hear the crunchies. <laughs> you know, but you got to keep going. You got to get through the hard part. Yeah, I like it, William. Yeah. All right. Uh, last comment uh, comes from at Dimitri uh, Prongo, 4890. He says, uh, don't fuck us up, Andy, and tell us this bullshit about my favorite vegetable, the onion. Well, bro, you got come a on. a lot of hate on the onion. Really? Yeah. Well, people say you know, that's mine. nobody likes to be made a fool of. You know, when they fall for jokes, it feels stupid. 
you all fell for a joke, and I'm sure you feel stupid about it. Oh, so you do like onions? No, I didn't fall for the joke. You all fell for the joke, including all the people that are mad. All you motherfuckers that are mad, go eat an onion and realize that you were the joke. Bro, uh, nobody eats a fucking onion out of the ground. Yeah, Just nobody hold, does that. No, hold on. We cook the shit. Listen, Put dude. Salads and okay, shit. so the first time ever, you you pull this thing out of the ground and and you're like, you take a bite of it. You're Nobody's, like, oh, no, nobody good. does that. They back in the day, you think they knew to cook this shit that grew in the ground? Yeah. No, they didn't. They cook carrots. It was a joke. You can eat carrots raw. Yeah, but you can cook them too. They made stews and shit. Listen, there. It was a joke. That's the. That's my official stance. And y'all fell for it. Bro, so be mad at yourselves. A mushroom and Swiss burger with fucking grilled onions on there? Bro. <clears throat> Bro. Not, we're talking umami. Listen, man. You flavor. shouldn't have. Listen. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be wrong. All you got to do is say, hey, I was wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand. We get made We get made fun of and we, made full, we fall for jokes and shit. French onion soup. You never have. That's not even that. real food. What do you mean? It's a soup. For peasants <laughs> that fell for the joke. That is actually true. Okay. That's true of the recipe. That, that's true. Was, onion rings? You don't fuck with onion rings, bro? That's different. Oh, no. Whoa, Hold whoa. on. That's different. Uh, no. That's different. How the fuck because is that different? Because it it's mostly fried breading. A blooming onion? You have a blooming I onion? I, I don't eat that one. The only onion rings I'll eat are from Culver's. Because <laughs> there's no onions in them. It's just fucking the what? fried part. <laughs> I can't help it. You guys are low IQ and you fell for the joke. Grifting, man. I, no, I'm not. <laughs> Just, I see past the bullshit. <laughs> guys, we appreciate you for being real ass fans. Keep liking. Keep commenting. Yeah, keep them onions out of your mouth. And keep the onions out your mouth. Yeah. And then your Nasty soups. Mofos. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, let's keep this cruise moving. We got headline number two. This is a, a great story I like to if, I, if onions are so good, how come nothing is flavored like onions? Onion rings? No. Like the fucking Why don't funions? they make drinks flavored like onions? They Why don't they funions? make fucking popsicles like onions? They don't make onion shit. They don't make carrot popsicles either. They make funions, which, who eats funions? Okay, Guilty that makes charged. sense. Guilty that as That makes charged. fucking sense. Bro, funions are delicious. Well, do you think anything's not delicious? <laughs> <laughs> All right, touche. <laughs> touche. All right. I'm, f- I'm a fat kid, bro. I am fat at heart, and there are still things I won't eat. There's things I won't eat. Like what? So Yeah, that's <laughs> what I thought. Um, I don't. All right. Let's go on to the headline number two, bro. We'll save you, save you some embarrassment. This is a great story to talk about. This is a great headline, great topic right here. Headline number two. Stay with me, guys. Uh, headline number two reads, uh, Biden-Harris DOJ sues Visa. Over alleged debit card monopoly. Okay. Interesting, right? Let's dive into this a little bit. A um, little uh, financial news for you guys. Uh, the Department of Justice announced Tuesday that it has filed a lawsuit against Visa, alleging that the company holds an illegal monopoly over the U.S. debit card market, Fox Business reported. The DOJ alleged that more than 60% of debit card transactions are processed by Visa, which charges over $7 billion in fees for processing transactions. The DOJ also claimed Visa was able to monopolize these transactions by illegally tamping down the competition. The DOJ pointed to how Visa insists upon exclusive arrangements with merchants and banks while it, quote, insulates itself from competition and smothers smaller, lower-priced competitors. Quote, We allege that Visa has unlawfully amassed the power to extract fees that far exceed what it could charge in a competitive market. Attorney General Merrick Garland said in a statement, quote, merchants and banks pass along these costs to consumers, either by raising prices or reducing quality or service. As a result, Visa's unlawful conduct affects not just the price of one thing, but the price of nearly everything. Uh, The DOJ's lawsuit alleged that Visa, quote, induces would-be competitors to become partners instead of entering the market as competitors by offering generous monetary incentives and threatening putative additional fees. 
and said the company engages in a, quote, deliberate and reinforcing course of conduct to cut off competition and prevent rivals from gaining the scale, share, and data necessary to compete for customers. Um, now, you have that. Okay. Cool. Now, do social media companies. Cool. Yeah. All right, but like, DJ, like, how is this news? What's the news here? All right, well, it's juicy. Read this headline. I, I bet. Oh, go ahead. I was going to guess. I bet it has something to do with them not getting their cut of some sort. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Probably not, though. Read this headline. Nancy Pelosi's husband dumps over 500K in Visa stock weeks before DOJ's antitrust lawsuit. Hmm. That sounds like a little bit of insider trading to me. It's almost like he knew it was coming. Almost. She's the best stock <laughs> picker in the world. So she steals I he your was still she, fucked up from the hammer stuff. Dude, they steal your money, then they invest their money, then they know the details of when the things are going to happen so they never lose with your money, but you're you don't you don't want privy to any of that information. Nope. We know how to invest your money better than you, clearly. Bro, these people, man. Dig this here. So Nancy's Pelosi, uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, uh, dumped over $500,000 worth of Visa stock just weeks before the Department of Justice slapped the financial giant with an antitrust lawsuit, according to the New York Post. The timing couldn't be more suspect. Visa, one of the most dominant players in the debit card market, is now facing charges of monopolizing the industry. Um, we just covered that. Uh, but if you go to Twitter, um, did you know Nancy Pelosi has a stock tracker? Like there is a group yeah, of guys. People that put that together. It's yeah. fucking amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, and they 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 uh, posted this uh, today. It says the DOJ plans to open up a lawsuit against Visa, saying they illegally monopolized the U.S. debit card market. Paul Pelosi uh, sold one million dollars. Not even just five. It was one million dollars of Visa um, just two months ago. It's wild. Now they reached out to Nancy Pelosi's office. What do you think she said? Something stupid. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi's office, of course, was quick to deny any wrongdoing. Her spokesperson claimed that Pelosi has no involvement in any stock transactions. Quote, Speaker Pelosi does not own any stocks, and she has no prior knowledge or subsequent involvement in any transactions, Congresswoman spokesperson told The Post. But that's not the only time. Like, I mean, this... It's not this can't. I mean, maybe this was Come just a on, coincidence. Man. We know this. No, we know this is BS. We know this is insider trading. They they have. Look, if it doesn't matter if they lie, why wouldn't they lie? If it doesn't matter if they lie, why? Like you, we all say, oh man, it's crazy. They're lying. Well, if there's no repercussions and no accountability, what difference does it make if they lie or not? No shit they're lying. We all know they're lying. Everybody in the world knows they're lying, but nobody's doing anything about it. Right. So they continue to do it. If you could steal hundreds of millions of dollars and just say, ah, I didn't do it, and you knew you were going to get away with it. She didn't do it. Yeah. She didn't do it then. She said she didn't do it, so she didn't do it. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. How how does anybody do think any different, bro? How does anybody think any different? Like, what do we what do we do? Use your logic minds, bro. Just the simple fact that their returns and their dividends and shit, like their their fucking the 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 their their return on investment. When you look at the numbers, they are almost quadruple that of a normal stock portfolio. You can't achieve that without knowing what the fuck is happening. Yeah, and nobody's doing anything. Like he did it just in fucking December. Would you stop if nobody did anything to stop no. you? Why? Why? why well, you're making all this money. Don't 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 fix if it ain't broken. Yeah. What do they say? But yet they overregulate and overtax every legitimate business in the country. Six hundred dollars if you spend, you know, send somebody on Venmo or cash. That's out. right. They're tracking your transfers on PayPal over six hundred dollars. But these people can lose trillions of dollars off the balance sheet for the Pentagon. They can you know, trade any stocks they want, make as much money as they want. Every single time they get called out, all they do is say this shit. Oh, Speaker Pelosi denies any wrongdoing. And that's that. So until there's accountability and until there's enough people that are pissed off, nothing's going to happen. Bro, bro. He, he just did this shit in December, too. I, he did it in he's December. Been, they've, 20, been do, they've been shares. doing it for 30, 40 years, dude. Yeah. 20,000 shares of Google a month before the DOJ filed their antitrust lawsuit against Google. 
in 2022, uh, he exercised one million. There was somewhere around one to five million dollars. Um, again, with Google, um, the alphabet uh, on call options um, in that same year. He also sold all of his NVIDIA stock one day before Congress was set to vote on a bill that would boost domestic production and cancel those. Con- like, there's plenty of evidence. There's no, I didn't know that NVIDIA was canceling their fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know that. We didn't know that. But these people sit on these fucking committees. They know this stuff. My, my, here's my suggestion to fix this. I say we get all of these fucking people, anybody that has any stocks, they sit on any of these committees and they have those stocks in those committees that oversee that shit. Take all of that fucking money. Let's, what do they say? Uh, divide the wealth. What do they say? Right? Yeah. Let's do that then. Because these motherfuckers are- The redistribution of wealth. Yeah, let's redistrib- Start with them. Let's do it. And then on top of it, you know, when we look at these things and we consider what's actually happening, did you see the video that I posted on my Instagram of that family in Ohio who was very poor- and they were talking about how the migrants had $30,000 on their EBT cards. I saw that, yeah. It's wild. Everybody should be paying attention to what's happening here. It's wild, bro. It's wild. But yeah, no, no. And then, you know, on top of that, yeah, let's let's hammer Trump. You know what I'm saying? You know, he's going back to court right now for that uh, um, civil fraud case they have where he's almost at half a billion dollars. Let's, let's, let's definitely beat up on him. But, you know, nothing with uh, Pelosi or anything. That's fine. Yeah, guys, Dude, jumping on. These people should, man. Everybody knows what's going on. I've been talking about it for four years. This, these people need to be held accountable, legitimately. They laugh in our fucking faces, dude. They laugh in our fucking faces about how much money they steal from us, what they do with it. We're just dumb little plebs. They got all these working class people barely being able to survive while they're building yachts and disassembling bridges to move the yachts through. Like all of these people, it's wrong. It's just wrong, dude. It's criminal and it's wrong what's each, happening. Yeah. Each, and each they think it's okay, guys. dude. Yep. And then they tell these people, the working class people, that people like me who create the jobs and employ people and sponsor you know, all the Little League games and the teams and do all the shit in the community, that we're the devil. We're the bad guy. We're the reason that the working class can't get ahead. And these people are fucking legit just stealing the money, just stealing the money and then investing it, going into office worth nothing, coming out worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And people are still, they they believe anything these people say. It's absurd. It's absurd. Yeah. Guys, jump in on this conversation. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think. That being said, let's get to our third and final headline. Headline number three. Got to get back to Diddy, man. Diddy, 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 um, yeah, Sean Diddy Combs' lawyer claims the rapper was found with so many bottles of baby oil in his home because the star likes to buy in bulk like any other American. <laughs> That's the best they got, bro. This guy's probably like the most expensive lawyer in the world. And this is like, they're sitting in the back room be like, fuck. What are we going to tell him? Just tell him we're going to fucking Costco, bro. <laughs> That's what he said. I, I like Costco's pizza, man. <laughs> Dude. What can I say, man? It's a bargain. <laughs> you show me a picture of Diddy uh-huh. in Costco with a fucking pizza and some samples next to the old lady at the thing and a carton of lube. And we can have a discussion. We can talk but about it. But that picture does not exist because no. it's a lie. No. Mark and Filio was responding to claims by federal agents that they confiscated 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant from Combs' home in Miami and Los Angeles as part of a raid linked to a probe into his alleged sex trafficking empire. Quote, I don't think it was 1,000. I think it was a lot. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so it was more than 1,000. This is, this is the lawyer speaking, bro. Yeah. I think I, I don't think it was a thousand. I think it was a lot. I mean, there is a Costco right down the street. 
I think Americans buy in bulk, as we know. <laughs> oh, man. I'd be getting my money back, bro. Dude. He continues saying, quote, and you know, these are consensual adults doing what consensual adults do, you know? We can't get so puritanical in this country to think that somehow sex is a bad thing because if it was, there would be no more people. <laughs> in other news... This is the best bro. his a gazillion dollar an hour attorney can come up with. Like, Listen, so I'm gonna, you're going to jail for about... You're, you're going to jail. For you're going to jail for uh, about ever. Not a thousand <laughs> years. I don't think it's that much, but like yeah. 900. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we like to give it to you in bulk. Americans go to jail, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, what the fuck, man? Fire this guy. He ain't it, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> the evidence must be super bad. It's like, it must be, be way worse than what we think. Well, it is. If and that's the shit that he's coming out with, he knows they got him. Listen. And feds don't typically, like, go into a case... Uh, unless there's a high chance of, of conviction. 1,000%, man. And by high chance, I mean like 99%. Yeah. The COVID and that doesn't include the fake convictions where when people don't cooperate, they put child pornography on their computer, which happens. Yeah. So, Those are 100%. Yeah, they get 100% conviction on that. Yeah. Did you notice Got like, uh, you know, how the, the, the it's always that way? You know, the people who... the uh, there's a lot here. Anyway, yeah, continue. Well, <clears throat> in other news, um, did you see uh, Sean Diddy Combs was moved into the same jail housing unit as Sam Bankman Freed? Think you, they're going to do business together? A little Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <no shit. laughs> yeah uh, Sean Diddy Combs, who was arrested last week on allegations of sex trafficking and racketeering, is being housed in the same living space of a federal detention center in Brooklyn as disgraced former crypto exec Sam Bankman Freed. Uh, three sources familiar with the matter tell NBC New York. <clears throat> Combs and SBF, um, as, Fried, uh, as, as Freed is currently uh, commonly known, are both being held at the Met, uh, Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. Now, the sources describe the unit as a barrack-style area uh, currently housing about 18 to 20 inmates. These inmates range from high-profile defendants like Combs uh, to cooperators, uh, inmates uh, who may require special protection. The area is separate from the overall general population unit, but is commonly shared living space, um, sources tell NBC New York. Now, <clears throat> while they're getting their Shawshank Redemption on, um, there was a very interesting interview that came out um, uh, yesterday, actually. Um, Suge Knight starts to talk. Have you seen this? No. This shit is wild. Okay, so Suge Knight calls out Jay-Z, Dr. Dre, and more rappers for staying silent amid Sean Diddy Combs' sex trafficking arrest. Uh, so Suge Knight, who managed Tupac when the late MC was uh, in a rap war with the notorious B.I.G. and Sean Diddy Combs, is speaking out on the farmer's legal issues um, and slamming those who are mum. Let's just watch the clip. Check this out. Okay, look, look at it like this. Mm. I look at real plain and simple. Ain't no, ain't no whistleblower. Facts is there. But right now, I don't care if it's P.I., I don't care if it's Rick Ross, I don't care if it's Jay, I don't care if it's Snoop, I don't care if it's Game, I don't care if it's Dre. Nobody's stepping up on the fact that you know what's going on. Nobody's not defending him. You You're right. You have guys in Interscope. You're okay, right. Okay. Well, Nobody is defending okay, him, like, but that's why I, I was in interested in hearing your perspective. Named, okay. Look, okay, but you had a guy named Tubby. He used to work for Interscope. This guy's job was to bring underage girls and girls to have sex with employees and other artists to the point where his friend got caught up with the same thing, how they read it, Puppy house for sex trafficking? They raided his friend house for sex trafficking. You have 60 seconds remaining. He never was on Sure, Except can you say something? Can you say something positive? Really look at the whole situation. Because you only got I mean, 60 seconds left. I everything I'm saying is positive. And I got a hand of a call right back. All right, Shug, you call back. Do you, think, like do you think that Diddy... He can do so... Do you think Diddy knows enough that... 
it's a very delicate balance that maybe investigators will want to know these other names and greatly reduce his exposure to criminality to time versus what people would do to keep him quiet. Number one, I've been knowing him a long time. And we was friends. We're not enemies, but we were friends. He's not a dummy. So he's smart enough to work his magic. On top of that, this man right here, he's been involved with the FBI for most of his career. He got powerful people. One of his partners who started his company with drug money, President Obama, got him out of prison. So it's not like he don't have no moves. So I don't, I don't think nobody should just count him out. Mm. I don't think he's he going to lay down and just crawl in the corner and die. He's probably going through a lot of shit right now because mm. he's probably going through a lot of withdrawals for the drugs. But the industry got him on drugs. My artist, well, my, one of the worst mistakes I could have made or protecting my artist is doing a deal in Interscope. When my artist used to pull up in ballet, the Murdoch building, they'd get out, they'd smell like weed. When they, they closed, it smelled like weed. When they, when they made it to any office, it would smell like weed. Those guys, for my artist, they didn't do cocaine to my artist. Mm. So once they got on cocaine, once they got on drugs, once they got on alcohol, and that's when the weird stuff happened. And I think that's what took Buffy down that lane. Mm-hmm. Remember, you got to remember, Clyde Davis, Russell Simmons, Andre Arreo. Simon, come on. You better believe it. Alcohol, drugs, he compromised his manhood. Because mm-hmm. he was taught that, he got Usher as a kid. Now, with that, there's also been a bunch of pictures that have been getting released. Um, if you guys are watching on YouTube, if you guys are on audio, come check it out. Um, a bunch of pictures have been released since uh, all of this is coming out now. Pictures with him with a very notable figures. <clears throat> I mean, bro, I don't really put too much uh, stock into pictures that pe- like, look, dude, this dude was one of the most mega famous people on the planet. So, like, he takes pictures with everybody. So, like, let's let's at least be real for sure okay just like donald trump's got pictures with epstein when he was at the fucking club before trump told on him and got him kicked out of the club right all right like we got to be you know unless the pictures are showing criminal activity which a lot of them probably do because we haven't seen a lot of them you know we got to be real about it that's all i'm saying but yeah i mean yeah i mean but still that looks like a fucking party no, it does. The only problem is, like, I mean, who are, how old were these girls? Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Because, and, like, allegedly, um, they've recovered thousands of videos. Yeah. No, videos. hey, I'm not standing up for them. No, no, I'm just it. saying, like, I don't like. Show me the pudding. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I don't like that. I don't like that shit, bro. I've had that shit happen to me before. I don't like that shit. We got to look at the real shit, okay? And I don't care if I fucking hate someone or love someone. Like, let's see the real shit, bro. Let's know what's really going on. I'm really tired in America of all this hush-hush, top secret, uh, you public can't know what's going on type of shit. And then we're just supposed to trust these people, like in the last story, who steal hundreds of millions of dollars from the American people and the media who you clearly weaponizes against people they don't like. And we're supposed to just take their word for it. Now, do I believe that Sam Bankman Freed is who the fuck they said he is? Yeah, I do. I also believe that Sam Bankman Freed was a young man who was manipulated into running a money laundering scheme for these very same people who are now prosecuting him. So do I think Puffy is a bad dude? Yeah, I think Puffy's probably a pretty bad dude. I think when you really dig into it, it makes a lot of sense to me that he had both Tupac and Biggie killed. That's my opinion, because it made his career. When you look at Biggie's first album after he died, what was it called? It was called Life After Death. It was one of his biggest albums, and I think his biggest album is a two-disc set. I know you young people don't know about discs. It's a but, disc. Yeah, but it was, a, am I right or wrong? It had Mo Money, More Problems on it, which was the hottest song for three years in a fucking row. Every single, like, why? And by the way, there's a whole bunch of songs on there with Diddy. So, what benefits Diddy more? Does it benefit Diddy more for Notorious B.I.G. to continue being a legend? Or does it benefit Diddy more to remove him from the equation and make a martyr out of him and then build his own career? 
So when I look at all these things, this dude has motive to do all of these things. And uh, I, I think at some point in time, this is my opinion, I think at some point in time he got caught doing some badass shit, some bad, maybe those two things. And they said, hey, that's okay. You're going to work for us now. And this is how we're going to do this. Yep. And we're going to invite these people to these parties and we're going to get them on tape or on video. And we're going to uh, you know, tell them to say these things and do these things when we need them to. Otherwise, they continue to be rich and famous and powerful. But when we need you to make a statement about COVID or we need you to make a statement about politics or we need you to make a statement about Ukraine or Black Lives Matter, you're going to fucking say it or else we're going to do this. And that's what I think is going on here. And when you think about, like I was talking to one of my uh, really good friends. Um, uh, no, actually, I was talking to my dad. My dad was like, how do they get all these people to say all the same thing? And I was explaining him like these little operations. And he's like, you really think that's what's going on? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what's going on. That's why they won't tell you who the Epstein guest list is. That's why they're not telling you who's implicated in this. You know why? Because the people that are busting these people are the people that are on these videos and lists. You know, and, and they need the operation to keep going. Yeah, that's right. You know, like, because, that's always my question. It's like, you know, like, did it get... Bro, bro, any of these people, bro, any of these people who died mysteriously, mm -hmm. okay? Isaac Cappy, uh, Aaron Carter, uh, all these celebrities, Corey Haim, like, all of these guys who have been kicked out of Hollywood, Mel Gibson, they're all saying the same shit. And they're all blackballed from Hollywood. Why is that? If it was total BS, then why are the people talking about this all of a sudden being killed in mysterious circumstances? Why, why are the people who bring this to the light all of a sudden being blackballed out of ever being in a movie or ever being in Hollywood or ever getting a record deal ever again? Why? Yeah. Okay? Like, that's real things that are happening. And... You know, I think at this point in time, there's a big, I don't know if it's the majority, but there's a lot of people that understand that we do live in a matrix that is controlled by very powerful people. All of the information that we get from the mainstream media at a national level, all of the information that we get from major mainstream celebrities, all of that shit is propaganda, all of it. And people are figuring that out. And it got so bad that it was built into our movies and it's built into, you know, every television show and all this ideology. And that's when people started rejecting Hollywood and they, the, the movies, you know, started to be empty and, you know, people don't watch these things and like all these flops where they remake these movies into these, you know, woke representations that, that, you know, are supposed to be inclusive. People are rejecting it. And so what that tells me is that people are getting very wise to all the pieces coming together. And, you know, I think there's plenty more people like this. We just don't know who they are yet. No. Yeah. And that's my thing. Like, I've always wondered, you know, like this shit comes out and like this shit has been going on for decades. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a fact. This Diddy empire, the allegations against them. These are things that have been happening for decades. Yeah. Okay. Almost 30 years with so, him. So why now? That's always been my question. And like, I feel like there's two, there's only two reasons of why this shit gets popped now and why he's, you know, getting these charges now. I think the first option is that, you know, hey, they just felt like he he's ran his course. They've done, you know, they're kind of just done with him. They don't really, they can't really squeeze like all the juices out. They, they squeeze the orange, if that's a word, right? I think there's a second option too. You know, and, and, they squeeze. They squoze. They squoze the orange. They squeezed all the juice out the orange. There you go. Um, but I feel they like they squeezed it. <laughs> they squeezed it, man. They did it. Um, but I feel like there is a second option too, though. And I mean, this might be like just the more you know moral high ground I try to take. But like, I mean, you know, what if like it came for the next push that they needed Diddy to do, and he just wasn't with it? Like, you know, he finally met his final straw. He had a glimpse of moral. <laughs> you know, enlightenment and was like, I'm not doing it. And then now, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like when they're, when they, it could be something else, bro. It could think? be, it could be the victims are starting to come out of the woodwork and they're not able to be ignored because there's too many of them. It could be a lot of different things. Yeah. We don't know because we don't get told the truth. Yeah. You know, and I understand due process. I understand, but like, you know, where's that due process like for the American people with the Epstein shit? Right. You know what I mean? Right. Where's that? Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's going to be the same here. Um, well, I know this, these guys are about to go have a fucking ditty party. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, there's probably worse places he could be that he would be less happy. I mean, yeah. like, he's around a bunch of dudes, and apparently, well, apparently that's what like he's into. Fucking, uh, uh, <laughs> even R. Kelly's having concerts in prison right now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, you say what you want about R. Kelly. His music's all right. He's got some good music. But yeah, Shawshank uh, Redemption, man. Yeah. Guys, jumping on this conversation. Let us know what you guys think down in the I comments. I do want to know what people think. Like, do you, th what do you guys think? I mean, to me, I see it very clear, but maybe I'm not seeing it right. Yeah. Let us know, man. Let us know. Guys, with that being said, let's get to our final segment of the show. As always, we have thumbs up or dumb as fuck. This is where we bring a headline in. We talk about it. You'll get one of those two options. Um, this one's a doozy. Uh, our thumbs up or dumb as fuck headline reads, inside disastrous Bridgerton Ball where guests were met with sad salads and dollar store decorations after forking out $2,000 for Regal Night Out. So there's a TV show. Um, it's a Netflix series called Bridgerton. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. It's, a, it's not bad, actually. Um, I watch it all the time. It sounds bad. No, it's not bad. It has a great storyline. They fucked up on season two, but like first season was pretty decent. Um, what? It's a good show. Let us know down in the comments. Y'all fuck with Bridgerton or not. You know what I'm saying? It's a good show. Motherfucker, you eat onions. Yeah. It's a Your it's taste a, is questionable. It's a show that... that Anybody that, who eats onions, their taste in anything else is highly questionable. Okay. Yeah. I don't I smell like fuck. Get the fuck out of here. Bridgerton. Isn't that like... Mm -hmm. what? What's that about? Uh, so it's it's like... <clears throat> it's set... It's like, like an action commando movie. Action commando? No. no. It's, like a, it's like a crime thriller? No. It's like a horror movie? There's, I mean, there's some. Okay, so it's not for you. It's like thriller in there. There's some like, suspense in there. Really? Yep. Okay. What What do they wear in this movie? Is this like? It's it's like you know like a. It's a period piece. It's a period piece. Or yeah. they wear like you know big ball gowns and shit. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. So do you do your little twinkle toes dances and shit when you're watching this? You dance around like when they dance. Do you dance? I uh actually. Um, though, uh, at, at my wedding, the violinist, yeah. the song she played, were all from the Bridgerton soundtrack. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. hmm. It's a good show. It's a good show. Anyways, besides the point, um, love it or hate it, uh, go to Detroit. <clears throat> These, uh, party, uh, producers, producer promoters, um, they, uh, pitched this, uh, Bridgerton themed party and, um, let's just dive into this. So. Uh, it was billed as a chance to step into the enchanting world of the Regency era. But Detroit's disastrous Bridgerton-themed ball is going down in history for all the wrong reasons. Fans who shelled out up to $2,000 for the evening of sophistication were left stunned when they were greeted by dollar store decorations, disposable plates... <laughs> And a lone violinist instead of a grand orchestra. You know promise. what they walked in saying? Where's the onions? <laughs> Gullible people, man. Uh, hey, I'd be pissed, honestly. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Yo. only other entertainment was a scantily clad pole dancer. <laughs> 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 who revealed she was hired just three hours before the event. <laughs> The ball. Was I got some things I could say, but I better not say them. <laughs> I got some things I could say. Bro, but it gets way worse. Okay. It gets way worse. The ball was such a failure that at least one reveler has reported to uh, the organizers to police and has plans for a class action lawsuit. While the venue told DailyMail.com they would never work with them again. Uh, Ashlyn Cook. Claims she has more than 50 fellow angry guests, including two with injuries, who are looking to sue organizers, Uncle and me. Uh, quote, nothing in your ticket you actually got, Cook explained. Uh, because of how poorly executed it was, it seems like a scam. I feel ripped off and cheated. They need to be held accountable. Uh, she added that previous events run by organizers, Uncle and me, had allegedly gone wrong, leading her to believe it was not just an innocent mistake. Quote, it's sad uh, it needs to not happen again. This was supposed to be my birthday gift. I'm a mom of two. I care for my disabled veteran husband. This was supposed to be a fun night out. 
We had such promise, uh, but it turned into anything but what we paid for. Um, now, one uh, TikTok influencer had this to say. Wouldn't even call it a ball. Wouldn't even call it an event. Wouldn't even call it an experience. It was terrible. It was terrible. First and foremost, let's talk about pricing. First and foremost, $150 bare minimum per person. And it's a spectrum. People pay more than $150 for their VIP tickets, for their experiences, for their carriage rides, for their photo ops. But at bare minimum, $150 per person. So when we walk in, the least that y'all could do is check a ticket to make sure that everyone paid. For people who did pay, we would like we would like to know that it's an experience that we paid for. I could have not paid and walked right in. That's number one. Number two, pre-event, you all postponed the event for September 22nd. The original date, the original date for the event was August 25th. Y'all let us know about the postponement August 22nd, but in the same day sent us an email that said, can't wait to see you all upcoming event details August 25th, begin time at 6 p.m. So we were kind of confused to receive that email and then a postponement the same day. So he had that to say. Now let's look at some of the pictures, okay? Uh, this is what Bridgerton looks like. Okay, very elegant, uh, very inspired, very demure. Okay. And uh, this is this is what they got. <laughs> Hold on. Before we get go back. What? You watch this shit. I watch it. I'm not listen, I'm I, I'm confident, bro. Uh, clearly, it's a great show. You you must be very confident. It's a great show. <laughs> okay, Shonda Rhimes, I believe, is the uh, producer. Grey's Anatomy. Watch that too. That looks fucking. It's horrible. Listen, bro, it's not that bad. It's listen. I thought the same. Right, Alex was watching this shit. I'm like, I'm not fucking watching that. You know, you sit on the couch for like. All right, go back to the first episode. <laughs> I gotta catch you up. <laughs> All right. Now you got to a point. I right, listen. Okay. Since we're being transparent hey. and honest, All I started right. watching the shit without Alex, and she got pissed. <laughs> it is what it is. All right. I'm proud, but this is what this is. I would have expected this, and I would have been pissed if I got this. It ain't, it ain't a real flower in that motherfucker. I want real flowers. All right, now the uh, one of the the lady uh, she that looks like we put on a, a, a f the worst possible wedding reception <laughs> in the back room of of the building. The back room looks better than this. Yeah, that looks like that little room we got over there where where we store all the shit. Mm -hmm. That's we put up. We could listen. We could do this. I would love to. Yeah. <laughs> what? All right, well, you got to take the blame when everybody gets pissed off. Oh no, it's it's gonna be. It's gonna be fucking great. yeah. Okay, we got. I got, bro. I got the suit. We got the suits. We wear the suits. That's different. That's a different suit. Can't Same talk time about, period. Can't talk about that. Same time period. No. So uh, this is uh, one of the those are blood and guts. Yeah, revolutionary funny. outfits. <laughs> These are. I wear lipstick, but I'm a dude. Outfits. Okay. All yeah. right. Do you put the makeup on like these guys? Come on, man. Yeah. All right, that's too I bet far. You do. You wear one of those masks with like the long ass bird beak. I would wear the mask. Yeah. All right. Um, now this is one of the queen. Uh, this is the queen in Bridgerton. Uh huh. Um, you know, th very elegant, very demure. Again, quit, quit saying that word. This is what they got. This is what they got. <laughs> <laughs> now <laughs> this is where it gets real fucked up. Okay. This this lady right here, who's supposed to be Queen Charlotte, right? We see. Uh, uh, so, so that's Queen Charlotte. This is Queen Charlotte. Uh -huh. Very respectable. Um, this is what they got. And apparently, this lady right here. <laughs> which one? It's Queen Charlotte. The Queen, the Queen Charlotte. <laughs> she was pushing her business card around and telling people to follow her on Instagram. <laughs> Looks like Miss Cleo. <laughs> Wait. For fortunes. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and one person said, <laughs> the Queen. <laughs> Greeted them by saying, what up, though? <laughs> <laughs> mm. And uh, there's the poll dance. <laughs> so now. Classy. You, you Listen. You do, Dude, imagine. Listen. Under promise, over deliver. No. Imagine <laughs> being someone that goes to something like this for fucking fun. I would. No, you wouldn't. I swear to God, I would. I'd go right now. 
All right, who else can produce the show? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go to this. This is terrible. You just said you would. No, I would go to an actual, like a uh, elevated one. Yep. I would be See, Sean, you got this shit, bro. You got no. I'm saying you got the show. You got the show. We can do the show, right? Yeah. All yeah. right, you're fired. Hey, man, listen. Yeah. I am who I am. All right. Very clearly. No, do the like talk. We could no from a business perspective, right? Like you, you know, you put the promise out there. You have to deliver the, you know, so like maybe like some uncle and me business advice for the close uh, your business. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't for you, bro. It ain't for you. <laughs> Listen, there's got to be some real consumer liability here too, bro. You guys fell for this shit. Mm. Like you, it's Detroit. Like, come on. What, what Detroit's no it's different in St. Louis. Detroit, St. Right. St. Louis, right? Yeah, but I mean, I'd host this shit in like North Carolina or something. All right, man. Well, good luck with that. Savannah, Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Like some, uh -huh. like Savannah, Georgia. Like some beautiful architecture and stuff. Hey, listen, man. You go do you. <laughs> You're gonna have a lot of free time. <laughs> yeah, you go do your thing. It's all good, man. Yeah, it's all good. Just don't invite me because I ain't coming. All right. Well, uh, guys, let me know if you guys want the invites, apparently. Uh, guys, Andy, that's all I got, man. All right. Uh, don't be a hoe. Share the show, though. <laughs>